What would you do if you ever attacked by a bear? Well, you uh, just lay down on a piece of bread, roll yourself in honey, and don't run away from us. I mean, I mean the, the bears. bears. Hey, this is a Bible study. We'll be in Proverbs 17, 9. we got Dad Joke Monday. Scripture, pray for your day. We'll be right back. Good morning. Welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake up. I'm Pastor Scott. I'm Pastor Jason. It's good to have you with us today. We've got a great show for him today. Go to wakeuptv.tv if you want to get a daily text, which uh, you just click on it and it takes you right to this show. If you're a new subscriber, type in where you're from. I'd like to read that on Wednesdays. And today we're talking about my message from last week. It was so last week. good and Thank timely. I, here's the thing. It's what everyone deals with. Because you're not going to go through this life and not have people be mean to you and do things that are insensitive and not leave you out and, and do rude me. It's just people. You can't go to the Starbucks someday. Like, you can't go. It's just on the road. It's everywhere. Well, the scripture was, keep, love keeps no record of wrongs. And so there's the admission that there's going to be wrongs. Lots of wrongs. It's, it's right in there. Like, you're going to be wronged. God's like, I can't fix that part. Right. But here's what you can do to fix it. You cannot keep a record of it. Keep no record of it and just release it. So watch this clip. It was such a great message. You might have a legitimate excuse to keep your record of wrong, but God says, I know, but don't do things the, world, the, the way the world does them. Do them my way. Imitate me and keep no record of wrong. Set down that stinky weed and watch your marriage begin to elevate. Watch your relationships begin to go up. Watch that friendship that there was betrayal get restored and renewed and be stronger than it was before. Why? Because you had forgiveness in your heart. You didn't keep a record of wrong. You had grace for somebody who accidentally fell down. It, it, it was just so great. You had the stinky weed thing. It was cool because they're growing everywhere and making stink. And that's what mm -hmm. bitterness and offense does. Yeah. It just stinks up everything around you. And I like the don't keep a record. You know what a... You, you interview any marriage that's happily married after 35, 40, 50 years, and you'll find they go, well, yeah, we just can't keep record of the wrong. Like, yeah. You really got down to it. Like, they, they're like, this, is, this was the big one for us. Yeah. Because your spouse is going to, your husband's going to say something dumb. Today, probably, at least yeah. two or three times. Right? Your wife is going to be upset in a mo maybe at, at a moment sometime this week. Right? And, and a lot of marriages that, that I talk to that are having struggling problems, it's like, they have just a, hey, let me tell you the record of the wrong. And then go back years. No, no, yeah. When we first got married 15 years ago, and you're like, what? When you keep a record of wrongs, that kind of stack of papers stacks yeah. up until you say, I can't take it anymore. Oh, well, that's so good. Right? And it's a straw that broke the camel's back. Jason. When you get to the I can't take it anymore, what you're saying is, is I haven't been letting go of things as they came along. <sighs> and I said, don't let the sun go down in your anger. And I talked about this is something you do for your own benefit because you, you have... People are going to fail. You can't change that. People are going to wrong you. You can't change that. But what you can do is you can have grace for people and you can forgive them and you can let the let record go. go. No, we're not, we're not talking about violent crime. I brought that up in my teaching. Like when I'm talking about violent crime or something like right. by well, all means, not. throw them in jail. Right. Like, protect you still yourself, forgive protect them. your children. But at some point, you're still going to have to deal with that offense in your heart and let it go. You still let it go. You still have to. Still Before, when the sun goes down, get rid of it. Proverbs 17, 9. I really like this. Whoever would foster love. Okay, means foster means that I, I carry love, like I I, mm -hmm. I live a life of love. I've, I've right I'm covers it. covers over an offense. So you cover it, you yeah. you let it go. But whoever repeats the matter separates close friends, and you see this in the workplace. Well, you know Sally, yeah, you know Pete, and what what the scriptures bearing out here is that that you bring in division. Our job is never to divide people. Yeah, our job is always to bring people closer together. Right, you you call up and you're like, hey, you know, I shouldn't be letting you know this, but uh, you know, you know what, blah blah blah, did, yeah, right, and it just comes out, and if, you know, it's funny because the flesh always feels good in the moment. Oh yeah. Oh, you know what, I had I had to just let, I had to get it out, Pastor. Yeah. No, you didn't. But look at the strategy of Satan here. That record of wrong separates. See yes. how it separates? It divides. Yeah, and so when you keep a record of wrong, it separates you and the person you keep the record with. Mm. And that separation can get thicker and thicker and thicker based on how many records you keep. Oh, wow. So this is what God does. He's like, look, I, I, I tried to figure out a way that you guys wouldn't wrong me anymore. I, I gave you all the rules, but you still broke them. And, and so you kept wronging me. So I came up with a new plan. Now, I'm not actually saying what God said. Right. I'm just kind of walking you through a human philosophical way of thinking that might add up to what God was up to. And so he says, I, I'm going to come up with a different way in which I can always be with you and never leave you, right? Because friends leave each other over wrongs. Right. 
I can't be with you anymore because you're wrong. And so we're not going to be friends anymore. So we cut that off. But Jesus is like, I need to have a situation where I never leave them nor forsake them. So how do I do that? I have to make sure that I remember their, their sins no more. Lots it out. That God says, I keep no record of wrongs with you. Right. Because I don't want anything to ever be between us. I'm going to be with you through thick and thin. I'm going to stick it out with you whether you misbehave or whether you behave, whether you're morally perfect or whether you're morally wrong. I'm not leaving you. I'm not leaving your side. I'm going to give you my kindness, my favor, my blessings, my spirit. I'm going to give you your miracles. I'm going to give you everything by faith. And it has nothing to do with your moral behavior. And you find that the strongest relationships are relationships that have grace. And so we can do this with others and go, oh, wait, you, you figured out a way to make this relationship mm-hmm. work. I can learn from this, Father. Right. Let me see how I can, I can have that same you know, love and grace for others. So love covers a multitude of sins. Love covers over an offense. So you Just covers it. Yeah, because people are going to offend you. Yeah, you just so cover you just it. just cover it. You just cover it. Just keep covering it. Which is a better strategy than, like you say, repeating the matter. Now, and I'm a... Because you know I'm very... I'm transparent. Now, Scotty, Scotty. So, me and Holly were up to about 12.45 last night watching... It's my guilty pleasure, and I apologize. But I really do... I learn a lot from this show. Love is Blind. I do. Season four. I, oh, I, love I, is blind. I, I hate to tell you. Like, to watch the dynamics and watch men and women, like, I get a tremendous... Me and Holly will pause it and we'll talk about it and what a moron my and what they're says, doing. My wife says, what do you like to show? And I, I like the psychology of it, but I also... I'm, I'm such a hopeless romantic. I know. When they, when they, I they, love the This romance. season had the best romances of any season, right? Yeah. So we're watching the reunion show, and you can see the people that have carried a record of wrong. Oh, they still have it. Oh, no, it's aggressive. Wow. Right? It's so aggressive of the wrongs. And you can see the ones that are sitting there. And they, it's, this is a year later. Like, this show was filmed a year ago. And they're just, they're just, they're just, you can tell it's all over them that they haven't just let it go. And what? then you have, you have a guy there, like, he's been, he was wronged, right? And he's happy. Everything's great. He's even telling the camera, he goes, here's the thing, guys, don't hate her. Don't do that. Like, you don't know all the things that go on, and, and, and you're only seeing 1% of the show, and everybody in here, we made mistakes and said dumb things. Don't hold it. Stop being... And it was the one that wronged him. Wow. He's like, just... Everyone just stop. I've let it go. You all let it go. We all just... Let's go on with our lives. This is not... This is not the big thing that we need to be... And I went, well, that... And once again, I get so much out of the show and watch it, and I go, that's good. Yeah. And you see him happy... And then you see a few of the people that are, are so overcome a year later with so much offense. Bitterness. And they're just, you, it just drips off of them. It's not healthy for you. Let's be over here like this one who is just, right, just let it go. Just let it go. Be happy. And the, and the Bible does say uh, live at peace with all people as much as you can. Right. Not everyone's going to be happy with you. Not everyone's going to like you. But as much as you can, try and live at peace with all people. And then it says to leave room for God's vengeance. Right. Because God is, this is in Hebrews chapter 13, I believe, it, because vengeance is the Lord's. It's not yours. Right. So you, you think, well, but they need to pay. Okay. But that's not really up to you. You're not a judge. Right. That's, that's up to God. But let it go so that God can handle it. He'll handle it the way he's going to handle it. And, and have the same attitude as Christ. Don't have the attitude of God, get them. Nope. Right? But just say instead, Lord, forgive them for they just didn't know what they were doing when they wronged me. And that's what Jesus, Jesus, like, Jesus never said, go get them. Mm-hmm. They get them. He's like, no, no, love gets them. And that's the thing they have to know is that love gets them. And so if you want to be a happy person, I think one of the foundational key parts of it is never going to bed angry at anyone. Mm-hmm. That every day, and I really work at this. And I've seen there was a there was a season like a couple of years ago where I was holding on to something and I held it a week and I, I just got mean. I just became a mean person. Mm-hmm. And I went, Oh and I went, yeah. Oh dang it. Like I, it's easy to fall into that because yeah. you were wrong. But you know what? I have to live a life where I'm characterized by by the time I go to bed. I've let go of everything. Mm. I'm okay. I'm good. I'm let it go. People are people. People are going to make mistakes. People are hurtful. People are going to put things on social media about me. People are going to misconstrue me. They're going to talk bad about me. People are going to leave. It's just people are people. But you know what? I'm Christ-like. That's what I am. And I love people. I encourage people. And I love my enemies. And I never keep a record of wrong. That's a happy life. That is a happy life. Well, did you receive something today? I would just encourage you to be generous, as you did. 
Um, we are raising funds right now for Pray.com. We believe this show, uh, this this channel, which you can get the app on it and check it out, this channel has the potential of putting us in front of a lot of people um, and really helping us minister. Really, it just kind of expands our voice. And we just need 10% of you. That's YouTube funny. has not been great at like expanding no. our voice and getting us out there. And and this is the truth. They throttle. You, you, and you know throttle this is Christian true. Programming. They throttle Christian programs. Now, if we were, you know, whatever, you know, whatever, Pootie Pie or one of these guys and all talking about garbage and things that don't matter in life, yeah, boo, they, they, they boost you up. But you're talking about God. Of course, they're going to hold it back. But there's an avenue where people are now beginning to go to where we can begin to reach mm-hmm. a tremendous amount of people. Uh, so we're and, just checking it out. Yeah. We're doing a little trial with it, and we could, uh, if you want to join us and help us check it out, um, give twenty five bucks and uh, we're, need, eight, need eighty of you. Eighty of you. Eighty, which is out of thousands, eighty of you. Uh, I don't. I think, think we've had about twenty five people now. Yeah, I think so. We're pretty close to that, huh? Yeah. I'd like to just finish it up this week and just get it rolling because we're trying to work out a real good deal they're giving us for May. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I really need to. Um, yeah, it'd be great. Just be a part of it. And, uh, you know, you're like, well, I can't do 25. Well, then do 10. Do five. Do what you can, whatever God puts on your heart. Amen. Dear Father, Lord, we thank you and praise you, Lord, that we're a people that keep no record of wrong, Lord, that we go forth in the love of Jesus Christ, Lord, that forgives. And we don't talk about it. We don't have to bring it up, but we cover it, Lord. We, get, we let it go before the sun goes down because we are happy, joyful, excited people who, you know, now I make mistakes, So you know what, I'm going to give some grace to people that make mistakes. As Jesus says, let he who has no sin throw the first stone. I guess I don't get to throw a stone. Because I too have been rude. I too have been hurtful. I too have let people out, left people out. And so, you know what, when people do it to me, I get it. Doesn't make it right, but I get it. And so I'm going to let it go and live a life that is free from bitterness, unforgiveness. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Dad Joke fra- Monday. Dad Joke Monday. Hey, JC, and this is important. Don't be mad at lazy people. They didn't do anything. What did Tennessee? The same thing as Arkansas. What concert cost just 45 cents? 50 cent featuring Nickelback. <laughs> Wouldn't that be 55 cents of it? Like the math? No, because you got a nickel back. Oh, it's a nickel back. Oh, my gosh. Why did the man fall down the well? I don't know. Because he couldn't see that well. I'd love to watch this clip. But I want to rewind a little further back to the, to the day that he dishonored his father. He dressed up like his brother and cheated his brother and stole that day. And he's running for his life. And that night, God visits Jacob. And Jacob's like, I should have been reprimanded. God should have came to me and said, hey, you you really messed up. Go back and fix it. But God doesn't do that. God came to me and showed me a picture of angels descending and descending from heaven. God was kind to me and showed me how he's blessing me. I had favor with God on a dark day where I had made a lot of bad decisions. Who is a God whose character is not moved by my behavior, but he is just loving and kind no matter what I seem to do, who chases me down and finds me on my dark day and loves me and blesses me. And then the night before Jacob sees Esau, he wrestles all night long with God. You ever do that? You wrestle all night long with God? You're, you're worried about your next day? He was in fear? He probably was mad about stuff? And You ever do that where you're wrestling with God? Where are you, God? Why are you not helping me? This is the night that Jacob's having. He wrestles all night with God. And at the end of the wrestling match, Jacob says, before you go, before I let you go, I want you to bless me. And he does. The Lord blesses him. It's such a weird story, I know. But it's a picture for us. And the Lord blesses him. And then the Lord changes his name, gives him a hope and a future. Changed his name from Jacob, which means deceiver, to Israel. God redefines who he, who he was, just like when you received Jesus and he gave you a new hope and a new future, and change your identity. Somebody say amen. And Jacob's like, who does this? A God that I fight with all night long, and his response to me fighting with him is blessing and hope and a future. Who does that? And then the next day, he meets his brother Esau. Esau, you should be mad at me. You have every right to be mad at me. You should be holding this against me, what happened. You should probably be at war with me. 
but instead you're favorable towards me? You kiss me and you weep like you've missed me? Like I deserve, I stole something from you, Esau, that I haven't paid back and I could never pay back and this is how you treat me? You remind me of this God who keeps chasing me everywhere. When I see your face, I see the face of God. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, be in church this weekend. And Thursday night is a big event, Jason, huh? We're doing our big Raz Conf. conf or, Revival, uh, Revival Arizona, Arizona is at Arizona State University in Tempe. Go to RevivalAZ.com to find out more. Or LivingWordEvents.com as, as well. You can find it there. Um, but we're going to do a night of worship on April 27th at 7 p.m. And we're just really excited about what, what we believe. Got. We're on the edge of something. I, I believe that we're on the verge of something. And uh, I would just encourage everybody within the sound of my voice to get every believer, every church, every pastor, every ministry, every student to tell everyone they know to bring in the prodigals, to bring in the lost, to bring in the hurting, to bring in the broken. Bring everybody you know and come on out there to this field and let's worship Jesus and see Jesus move in people's lives. That's how you change Arizona. Mm. Getting on Facebook and you know giving your opinion, that doesn't change anything. Getting people out to an event like this, this changes people. Yeah, it does. Amen? Mm. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay.